Karnatic Grammy's big meltdown. War on Chennai's iconic Carnatic throne. TM Krishna's award sparks big fight. Carnatic maestros divided over award. Mega war over Carnatic crown. Top focus on five lives. It's Carnatic music's biggest fight. Perhaps in decades now. It's a world that hasn't been without controversies, but this is the big one. Literally, the Grammy Award of the Carnatic music world has gone to someone over which there has been a huge, huge surge of anger amongst maestro after maestro pulling out of Carnatic music's biggest night. And some of them are going to be joining me today on Five Live to tell you why they are so angry, why they've returned their awards, and why they are pulling out of this event. I'm Shiv. This is Five Live. These are the headlines. Big escalation in the Congress finances war. Congress claims Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah are choking party poll funds to cripple the Congress's campaign. BJP rubbishes the charge, calls the Congress claim a poll rout and a walkover. Congress veteran Anand Sharma slams Rahul Gandhi in public, accuses Congress of identity politics with its caste census demand, says Rahul is insulting Indira and Rajiv's legacy. Anand Sharma is a member of the apex CWC of the Congress. Big setback to Arvind Kejriwal. High Court grants no protection from arrest for the Delhi Chief Minister. Enforcement retreat reply to Kejriwal plea by April 22nd. Is Kejriwal's arrest in the Liquorgate scam imminent? State Bank of India finally complies with all requirements from the Supreme Court. Discloses all electoral bonds data to the Election Commission. Submits complete list of donors and parties to the poll bodies. Also files an affidavit of compliance in the Supreme Court. In the lofty world of Carnatic music, controversies are few and far between. But when they do happen, they are absolute earthquakes, like what we are seeing today. TM Krishna, undoubtedly one of the most talented and gifted Carnatic musicians, has been chosen as the Sangeeta Kalanidhi awardee for 2024. For those of you who may not know, the Sangeeta Kalanidhi is literally the highest award in the world of Carnatic music. This award, considered perhaps an Oscar or a Grammy equivalent for Carnatic music, has triggered a huge controversy because many renowned Carnatic artists, including Ranjani and Gayatri, the Trishur brothers, who will be joining me live shortly, among many others, have announced their withdrawal from participating in the Music Academy's conference as it will be presided over by T.M. Krishna, where he will be given this award. They say T.M. Krishna often vilifies Carnatic music, the fraternity, and keeps denigrating spirituality in music and has taken a casteist stand in the past against Brahminism. Here's a detailed report. <laughs> Madras Music Academy conferring the Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award to renowned musician T.M. Krishna has struck a discordant note with the Carnatic music industry. <laughs> Top classical musicians have now raised the banner of revolt. Leading the charge against T.M. Krishna are celebrated Carnatic musicians Ranjani and Gayatri. They've cancelled their concert at the Music Academy's conference, accusing T.M. Krishna of insulting icons like Tyagaraja and M.S. Subulakshmi. The music conference happens with a presiding musician. 
and the mm-hmm. music conference is led by such a president we do not want to be part of a festival a conference which has the tm kuna as its president one of the reasons is that uh, uh, the area mr krishna has always consistently tried to vilify and uh, throw mm-hmm. stones at the musical fraternity um so this needs to be uh, and a lot of sensational press coverage has to be given has been given to such accusations without finding out the accuracy the rightness of such accusations anjana kumarane ko parama mangalam a past recipient of the sangeeta kalanidhi award and another carnatic music legend chitravina n ravikiran has also joined the anti tm krishna chorus He's returned the award that was conferred upon him in 2017. This statement should hopefully bring about an awakening of the responsibility of artists in bringing the country together not bringing communal disharmony communal intercommunal mistrust or inciting intercommunal hate all these things mm. so so that is not the purpose of uh, good art in my mm. humble re- reckoning so i mm. think that my stance was only taken purely on those grounds others who also pulled out of the annual conference of the madras music academy include the trichur brothers who say that participating in an event presided by tm krishna will make them hypocrites in their own eyes mridangam maestro arjun kumar has also withdrawn calling tm krishna anti dharma Priya sisters and Vedic speaker and writer Dushyan Sridhar have also declared that they will not be participating in the music conference. Singer Chinmay Shripada however has called out the Karnataka music industry for platforming alleged molesters. After outrage the Madras Music Academy has expressed shock. Its president N Murli has said the award is presented to TM Krishna solely based on his excellence in music over a long career with no extraneous factors influencing the choice. TM Krishna is not new to controversies and has been a vocal critic of Brahmin dominance in the Carnatic music industry. With Anaga Keshav in Bengaluru Bureau Report India Today. So those who have decided to boycott and stay away from Carnatic music's biggest night reads like a literal roll call of the who's who of the Carnatic music world. So let me just uh, read out uh, the names of some of them. Chitravina Ravikaran is a Carnatic music artist whose name had actually cropped up in 2018 during the entire Me Too movement. He's returned his Sangeeta Kalanidhi award, the same award that's now being given to TM Krishna. Trishur Brothers famous carnatic musicians they've pulled out from the music academy conference and have said that if they attend it it will be the biggest act of hypocrisy ranjani and gayatri iconic carnatic vocalists uh, they are sisters they have decided to pull out completely uh, from this it in fact it was their post on social media that has sparked this entire storm they've pulled out from the music academy conference dushyant shridhar is a well known vedic speaker uh, and uh, and analyst he's a Uh, he's also pulled out from the music uh, academy conference after some very strong words about what he believes uh, is the actions taken by the music academy in awarding uh, uh, tm krishna and having him preside over the music academy conference i want to bring in india today's anaga keshav who's been in touch with this entire list of artists who've decided to stay away from the conference and have registered their official and strong protest over uh you know the 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 many uh, the, the 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 many actions of tm krishna his uh, you know the stands he has taken in the past over various issues so they believe that they are aggrieved enough to actually either return their awards or stay away from carnatic music's biggest night and these are big actions anaga it's not easy for artists like uh, you know ranjani and gayatri or chitravina ravikiran and others uh, you know to stay away from what is literally considered and i hate using this analogy but you know almost almost like a grammy night for carnatic music they've decided to boycott it 
Well, Shiv, nobody in their wildest dreams would have thought that controversy and rebellion will come knocking the doors of Carnatic music of all, Shiv. You know the field much better. They're all too much into culture, their own house, what the society mm. will think, that, you know, their prestige issues. It's a very tightly knit fraternity where everybody knows everybody. And let me make one thing clear, Shiv. This decision wasn't taken overnight. In fact, this rumblings about TM Krishna versus the rest of the Carnatic fraternity has been simmering for the last seven to eight Eight years for the last close to a decade it has always been TM Krishna versus the rest of the fraternity ever since he started uh, getting political ever since he started making political statement all the artists however they did attend his concerts but nobody really uh, uh, you know nobody was really outspoken about their political stances when it came to TM Krishna's views mm. but last night everything came to a standstill when iconic world-renowned singers Ranjani Gayatri put their foot forward on Twitter and yeah. left right and center they started talking about TM Krishna opposing his views in fact they went a step ahead and took up Periyar stance as well one of the most contro you know one of the most controversial subjects shift and they outrightly stated that they oppose Periyar's views the fact that he has used profanity against the women who are from the Brahmin uh, community. They were, you know, they, you know, you know, yeah, uh, no, yeah. you know, not for a second were they apologetic when they spoke about all these things. You know, they were outspoken, and now they have decided to, uh, uh, you know, to withdraw from their performance that is going to happen in the music academy. And she, right after that, one by one, every single music artist in the Carnatic fraternity started backtracking their performance in the music academy. We have a list now, and we need to wait and watch how many more artists are going to withdraw their performance from the music academy. Okay, stay with me, Anaga. I want to just, uh, you know, bring up for our viewers now the very strong words that have been used by each of these iconic Carnatic uh, artists uh, while they boycott the music academy over their felicitation to, uh, to TM Krishna. Ranjani and Gayatri, world-renowned Carnatic singers, top of their game, most respected, very, very rarely speak out on controversial issues. They say TM Krishna has happily stomped over sentiments and insulted the most respected icons. They're talking about people like MS Subalakshmi and others. Then you go to Chitravi, uh, 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 Chitravina Ravikiran, who's a musician and composer. He says TM Krishna has tried to polarize and destabilize Indian classical music. Vishakha Hari, well-known Carnatic vocalist, says TM Krishna has engaged in a lot of slandering and hurt sentiments willfully. Trishur brothers, musicians and composers, two brothers, they say participating in the conference presided over by TM Krishna will make us hypocrites. Arjun Kumar, Mridangam Maestro, performing at the academy is against our great dharma and parampara. Dushyan Sridhar, Vedic writer, always, also supposed to be part of the conference, says pained by T.M. Krishna's statement on Dharma, Ayodhya and Sri Rama. So these are the things that have been said by these well-known icons. These are not sideshows. These are all highly well-regarded, multi-award winning artists, uh, you know, top of their game, who've decided to register their protest and anguish and pull out of what is considered uh, uh, something that would be their biggest night. I want to bring in India today's Pramod Madhav as well. Pramod, uh, you know, I, I, I also grew up in Chennai. Music Academy is, is, a, is an institution, one of the most well-regarded and well-respected institutions that finds itself in the middle of a very, very ugly unfolding battle, uh, uh, you know, between the absolute icons of Carnatic music. You know, it does not get bigger than TM Krishna, Ranjani Gayatri and, you know, singers like this. And to see this very public slugfest playing out, uh, you, know, has, uh, you know, has disturbed fans in their millions all over. And as you and I both know, they come from all over the world to watch these concerts, uh, you know, in the beautiful city of Chennai. What are you hearing? How is the Music Academy planning to navigate this? There was an angry letter written by N. Murali of the Music Academy, uh, you know, to Ranjani Gayatri saying what they have done is extremely wrong. But what do you see happening next, Pramod? Well, uh, just like you mentioned, it's a very important aspect that the Music Academy is also one of the iconic places in Tamil Nadu, especially in Chennai. And just like you mentioned, it is a world-renowned center for performance artists. And every year, the December part called as Margari and Margari Utsavam is something that is connected where like, people from across the globe come over to visit and watch and like uh, enjoy the performance of various artists, Carnatic music and various other aspects to its shift. But right mm. now, it has turned into a political discourse. Just like you mentioned, uh, the, uh, like, uh, the N. Murli, who's like heading the 
uh, Music Academy yeah. has written a letter. It's definitely unapologetic and it also is like uh, supporting TM Krishna. But unfortunate part here is that involving the name of Periyar has now turned into a, it, 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 the issue into a political one as well because DMK is right now backing uh, uh, TM Krishna, be it Kani Mori or TK Silagovan. They claim, in fact, TK Silagovan said that like uh, Dunjani and Gayatri are having an issue with TM Krishna because he sings in Tamil and they want to sing that Tyagraja Kitana in Telugu. So the DMK claims that they are trying to insult Tamil. So that way, unfortunately, performance art, the uh, Carnatic music is now turned into a political slugfest while DMK is supporting TM Krishna yes. and claiming that uh, his views about Periyar and they also suggest that Periyar never called for any genocide and DMK claims that Periyar is the biggest feminist Tamil Nadu has ever produced him. Very interesting. You saw Kani Mori's tweet also there, uh, supporting uh, supporting TM Krishna and uh, you know and attacking this uh, you know what many are describing as a meltdown among many of these artists. But this is their stand, and to describe it uh, thus, uh, you know, only paints it in an even stronger political color. So uh, we're going to look at the fallout of this entire controversy very closely. It all began. Thanks very much, Pramod, for joining us. It all began with Ranjani Gayatri. Two iconic Carnatic musicians uh, who are well known not only for their incredible talent but for the fact that they are extremely sober, they stay focused on their art, their color, their singing and very rarely get into uh, controversial aspects. They have spoken out before, there's no doubt about it, but they very rarely come out in public in such a strong way. They have no real axe to grind, at least no visible axe to grind. They don't appear to have any agenda, but here they are right now in the middle of the biggest controversy in living memory to hit the Carnatic world. India Today's Anaga Keshav was the first journalist to get in touch and speak to Ranjani Gayatri, the sisters who've taken a stand. Take a look. You've finally broken your silence on this important topic that has always been lingering in the minds of a lot of Carnatic musicians. In fact, right after you tweeted, so many other artists have followed your footsteps and some have returned their Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award. Some have cancelled their performances in the Music Academy. Uh, Ma'am, I just want to ask you, uh, going against a Sabha that is as influential as Music Academy, what led you to take this decision, Ma'am? We are not against any sabha, and we uh, completely recognize the uh, power and right of Music Academy to bestow their award to anybody that they want to. Uh, mm. If you notice the communication, the post, if you read it carefully, we have not talked about the award at all. It mm. is We have said very clearly that the music conference happens with the presiding musician. And when a music conference is led by such a president, we do not want to be part of a festival, a conference, which has Mr. T.M. Krishna as its president. And this is our problem. And of course, our post also lists the reasons that we have given. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, uh, the area, Mr. Krishna has always consistently tried to vilify and uh, throw mm. stones at the musical fraternity. Um, so this needs to be, uh, and a lot of sensational press coverage has to be given, has been given to such accusations without finding out the accuracy, the rightness of these accusations. And uh, if you want to really do social work, uplift, take music to areas, to regions, to communities, then there is a way to do it. And every musician, we are all willing to come together to join in this noble purpose of taking classical music to everyone. In fact, that is our avowed purpose too. But you can do it without defining villains and projecting yourself as a hero. That is not only defamatory and unnecessary accusation, it also puts yourself in a position of unearned power and power. And that is why we have uh, we call out this entire posturing as social work. The second very important uh, position that we have taken is Krishna's glorification of a figure like Eviya, who has consistently 
uh, I would say denigrated a single community called for genocide. Please note that genocide is a criminal offense. And um, he may have done some good work, which I am willing to be educated on Periyar, Bharati, and so on. He may have done good work, but does that justify genocide? A call for genocide. A call for genocide. Does it, does it justify the yeah. of Brahman community, particularly its demand? Is it not misogyny at its worst? Uh, so, and frequent use of profanity, abuses consistently over decades. You know, I hmm. don't want to even know these terms which come directly to your mind, but you can go search for it. So profanity hurled at a single community does not make anyone a social reformer. So to glorify these people and call them and then, you know, try to bask in, in this kind of a, a, a wild light does not fit my idea of social reform. And we have spoken against all this and, you know, that is the contents of our list. And to be very clear that TM Krishna is regarded widely and almost unanimously as one of the greatest Karnatic vocalists of our time. His talent is beyond reproach and beyond doubt. But this controversy over the boycott of a ceremony that involves him where he is presiding is to do with his stance on certain issues, political and social in the past. Number one, he's held classical music concerts inside a mosque. This has, uh, this has provoked hardliners. Number two, He's been of the notion that artists in the Carnatic fraternity are particularly Brahminical and casteist. He often criticizes Brahminical dominance in the Carnatic music scene. This has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Uh, he has uh, alleged that Bharat Ratna MS Subalakshmi, one of the greatest icons of Carnatic music, embraced Brahminism to be more accepted in that world. He constantly highlights the fact that Carnatic uh, music fraternity is not inclusive at all, and it's a very, very closed-door kind of policy, especially for outsiders. So these are the many things that have uh, gotten TM Krishna into the headlines, but also not really ingratiated himself very well to others within the Carnatic music fraternity. And clearly, things have come to a head now with TM Krishna being awarded the Sangeeta Kala Nidhi, the highest award in the Carnatic music world. Now, TM Krishna has made all these controversial statements in the past, controversial to those who've been, uh, you know, who, who've been aggrieved by them or offended by them. But let's listen in to this clip from seven years ago of TM Krishna at the India Today conclave where he was a speaker and a guest. Take a look, seven years ago in Mumbai. We were bulldozed. I'm not one who believes that Jalikatu was something that should have been solved the way it, it was solved. There was a certain pushing down of a certain idea. It, of course, transformed to a certain Tamil nationalism and identity that also it became. But I think the problem is with the way the discourse panned out. It became about Tamil identity. It became a certain... It almost went back to this whole north-south, this ignoring of the Tamil. See, Tamil identity is very unique. It's very different from most other southern states. You have to understand that. And I think Jallikata kind of tapped into that kind of an emotion. And that's why, and like I said, I think Peta handled it horribly. And in this whole thing, it became something very passionate, something that was about um, placing their presence in the national order and making Chennai be heard in New Delhi. That whole thing snowballed into something else. But it was a mutiny, but I'm not very sure you can call it a kind of mutiny where it was the people's voice. Dalit's voice were not heard. And by the way, when you all talk about democracies and democracy, either you have democracy or not, we're so comfortably sitting in this room and talking about it. There are different democracies. The idea of democracy changes, depends on your social address, your religious address, your caste, your gender. We don't talk about gender. Democracy changes. It's, we can't speak in black and white. And therefore, even saying either you accept democracy or you don't ac accept democracy, to me itself is a kind of marginalizing statement to make. And so we have to be very, very careful about this. I think we should realize that when we say that voices are being shut down or voices are being shall we strangled now, in a delicate idea of democracy, it's much easier to do this and also get away with it. 
And I believe that we are in a situation where in a democracy today, voices are being suppressed. Voices are being, I mean, it's not a question of we having this platform. What kind of voices are being suppressed? I think voices that are marginalized are suppressed unless they get themselves a huge country around and get so let pressure. Mr. Thorat respond Therefore, to there is there is this margin, and it, it's much easier to do it in a delicate idea like democracy. The question now is how much worse is this going to get uh, before the music academy decides that it needs to do some troubleshooting. For the moment, things appear to be at an impasse because after Ranjani Gayatri, the two vocalist sisters began. Uh, what has transformed into a kind of tsunami of boycotts and award wapsies, uh, you know, and uh, you know, and blacklisting of this entire ceremony and this event, uh, the Music Academy, through N. Murli, its director, has shot back, uh, appearing to hold on to their guns, not uh, you know, not really sober things down, uh, not try to make any major changes to what has already been planned, most certainly not rethink the decision to provide this particular award to, uh, to, to TM Krishna. Joining me live now uh, on the show, we're very privileged to have the Trishur brothers, uh, two very, very well-known uh, Carnatic uh, musicians and composers uh, who have also decided to pull out of this particular event. They have publicly registered their protest and said that if they, uh, if they participated in the Music Academy's event, then they would be hypocrites. Welcome, uh, Sri Krishna Mohan and Ram Kumar Mohan, better known as the Trishur brothers. Thank you for your time. I know you're about to catch a flight, so we appreciate your, uh, your time in uh, joining me on the show. Uh, Sri Krishna, to you first, uh, could, could you explain your tweet, the reason why you have said that if you are part of this, you will be hypocrites? Can you explain that, Sri Krishna? Yeah, you know, to, I mean, to get this perspective right, you know, first of all, We've been singing for more than 30 years now, 30 plus years. And uh, everywhere we've gone, you know, inside the country and outside the country, the one really amazing thing about classical music, Indian Carnatic music, whether it is uh, Hindustani or Carnatic, is the fact that this is a fantastic tool to unite people. Hmm. All right. And this is a very pristine art form. And uh, there are a lot of things which will you know, which if we start talking about will we'll take a lot of time. So keeping it, you know, putting it in a nutshell, uh, we, we honestly think uh, TM Krishna's approach to this whole, to his narrative uh, mm. is extremely divisive. And, uh, you know, it honestly is not what we believe in as Carnatic musicians or as human beings. Uh, therefore, the tweet. Ram Kumar, can you can you elaborate a little bit on the specific things that uh, that T M Krishna has said uh, that you have taken exception to? Because it's very rare to see you know iconic singers like yourselves come out and take a very hard position uh, you know on a very prestigious award and a prestigious event of this kind. Can you give us examples of what it is that T M Krishna has said or done that you have taken exception to? Right. So we'll again start with giving you a little bit of perspective of our approach towards music. We yes. are, um, um, as, as brothers, we grew up in Trichur, in Kerala, uh, where we were not really exposed to the Sabha cultures or singing in a particular slot or the commercials of music. We learned music and practiced music simply for the love of the art form. And from time immemorial, we've been learning from gurus who've always given us um, uh, a good lesson on the importance of lyrical value as far mm. as not just Carnatic music, but as far as music is concerned. Yeah. The simplest example that I can give you is <clears throat> as school going children, uh, we've been part of many a school choir. We've sung everything from Sarvadharma songs to Christmas carols to uh, devotional songs to Carnatic music. So irrespective of the genre of music, the lyrics are very important and one needs to understand the frame of mind and the context in which a particular composer has put in those lyrics for the music. Now, coming to Carnatic music, to mm. basically say that Carnatic music basically is an art form that has to stand by detaching itself from the lyrical value or the contextual devotion and bhakti that it is rooted on is, to be honest, extremely illogical. Like 
like I said, it's not something that is specific to simply Carnatic music. If I were to pick up an A.R. Rahman song and completely the butcher, completely butcher the lyrics and sing this particular song and then claim that, you know, the music takes over, I don't care about what the lyrics are, that would, you know, as you understand, would be quite illogical. So mm. we've often found that uh, TM's view on some of these aspects are trying to drive a narrative that even the same composers did not really give too much importance to the lyrics, which right. unfortunately is not correct because the music came in, the lyrics came in, and they kind of coexisted. So in order to prove a point, to simply say that the music can stand on its own without the lyrics is mm. a very, very layman approach, is basically trying to mislead uh, people, in our opinion. And, but you know, according to... According to us, yes. if, if I may, if I may, you know, clarify this point too. Uh, we we also have have been following this for the last more than five seven years, and uh, there has been constant changes in T M Krishna's stance. Uh, uh, you know what we call convenient philosophy is broadly what he's been adhering to in in our opinion, and for that matter, you know he's got this award Sangeeta Kalanidhi from the Music Academy. If you look at the last, let's say, 40 Sangeeta Kalanitis, most of them have been Brahmins. Okay? Now, if he truly believes in what he says, he shouldn't have accepted this award. Hmm. Hmm. We, we so you're calling add... him a hypocrite then? You're calling him a hypocrite? Right. In, in our opinion, most definitely. Yeah, and, and... And to be honest, I feel he's a little confused too. See, um, I'll just go to specifics here because you asked me for it. Now, we all know the great M.S. Subalakshmi Amma, who is a shining beacon of light as far as the country is concerned. Yeah. She hails from the south of India. She hails from Tamil Nadu. Uh, we've seen statements by T.M. Krishna in the beginning where he said that, you know, Carnatic music is, uh, the Brahmins are gatekeeping Carnatic music. And then mm -hmm. when somebody pointed out saying that, hey, but you know what, the greatest Carnatic musician, possibly the only Carnatic musician to have won a Bharat Ratna, uh, Srimati M.S. Subalak Miyama, this is a non-Brahmin, he changed the narrative. And then what he said is, no, 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 she got the Bharat Ratna and she became so popular because she she kind of behaved like a Brahmin. Do Embraced you understand Brahminism the duplicity is what he the whole said, yes. statement? Hmm. Hmm. So, you know, more than anything else, you know, it is, it is our responsibility to uh, uh, our resikas, people who listen to our music, yeah, yeah. and most importantly, our responsibility to our students, you know, who look upon us not just as musicians, but also as human beings with certain value system. So, okay, I understand that. L let me ask my next question, Sri Krishna, which is that, you know, N. Murli of the Music Academy has written a letter. I don't know if he's reached out to you, but he's written a letter to Ranjani Gayatri, who, like yourselves and T.M. Krishna, very well-regarded, uh, you know, Carnatic musicians, uh, where he has taken very strong exception to this boycott and said, uh, you know, this is ridiculous and, uh, you know, something like this is not expected from artists like you because the, uh, the because the Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award is given based on the merit of a singer and not about views and political views, etc. Basically insinuating that people like Ranjani Gayatri and you, the Trishur brothers, are bringing, you know, are bringing opinion and politics and non-music aspects into, into this discussion. How do you respond well, to that? that? That's what N. Murali has said. I'm sure you've read his letter. Right. So, so keeping aside N. Murali's letter for a moment, mm. uh, you know, uh, what we would like to say is that uh, once again, as we said, you know, for, for us, you know, this, this, you should also realize that the music conference, the annual music conference in the academy is a little different in the sense mm. that the Sangeeta Kalanidhi designate presides over the entire event, which spans for more than two, three weeks. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a one-day event where Mr. T.M. Krishna comes, receives the award, says what he has to say, what says what he has to say, and gets away. Uh, that's not the thing. He is going to preside over the entire season. So, so you must you must understand that from our, you know, people with uh, a value system like what we have. Okay, mm. it is definitely going to be difficult for us to sing a concert which is officially presided over by Mr. T.M. Krishna, right? Uh, mm. So, I mean. Without getting into the letter of Mr. N. Murli, we are yet to read that, to be very honest. Uh, right. mm. This is my opinion. Yeah, I think um, the, the other point is, I mean, the one point that I want to make here is, you know, I think freedom of expression and freedom of speech is a two-way street. And uh, we are always open for the debate. The only problem that we've had so far is that, 
unfortunately, we have not been privileged enough to get a free column on the Hindu or the Indian Express at will. Many other people do that, as you know. Right? So our voicing of an opinion can happen. So this is something that's been happening over the last eight years. Why okay, did it take okay. the world so much time to actually get into a discourse on this? Because now we've decided that we'll put our foot down and we are requesting to the world to please listen to our prerogative and not simply blindly trust what TM Krishna is saying. The, the, That's all uh, we're uh, asking. Uh, uh, Ram Kumar, you know, those who support uh, TM Krishna in this particular controversy, I, I don't think there's any debate over talent here. I think all of you regard each other right. as very talented musicians. But right. you know, on, on the issue of this controversy, those who support TM Krishna would say that many of his opinions, uh, you know, have, have been pointed towards you know, illuminating some of the darker aspects of the world that you inhabit and uh, the, the impulse is about reform and, you know, progressing, uh, uh, you know, an arcane, arcane world like Carnatic music. How would you respond okay. to something like that? Um, I That the honestly, impulse and questions. the intention is a positive one. Right. Now, I honestly have two questions uh, pointed towards this. Point mm. number one. We've done thousands of concerts and quite a few organizations, and we've never come across a situation anywhere where somebody has not been allowed into the concert based on their cultural or socioeconomic background. Right. Right from a cinema theater to an IPL to a concert in a Sabah to Hari Haranji's concert to uh, Beyonce's, Beyonce's concert, hmm. ticket is something that anybody has to buy to enter. So let's forget yeah. that for a moment. There is no socioeconomic barrier that's coming into the picture. Point number one, we run a school called Trichur Brothers Online School of Music, where we have students across various cultures, nationalities, religions, and castes. To be honest, we don't even know what caste and religion they belong to because our application form for the institution does not contain a column for religion or caste. The right, only right. question that we ask our students before they join the school, where we have a personal interview with them, is to ask them, how committed are you to music? Are you going to quit just because you're moving to the 10th standard? I understand, standard I understand standard? the point you're making. I understand the point you're making. I, you know, only for paucity of time, I'll throw in just a couple more questions. I, I take the point that you're making, Ram Kumar. But Shri Krishna, right. uh, you know, uh, 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 Ranjani Gayatri came out with their big, you know, very strongly worded public uh, statement. Vishaka Hari, then you, uh, uh, the both of you, then the, you know, there's a list of at least nine or ten different artists who've come forward and expressed by and large, the same kind of, uh, you know, anguish and objections to TM Krishna. Uh, uh, what does that, you know, d d was there some kind of discussion among you? Are you guys all in touch? Or was this you like know, this an is... organic, organic kind of rebellion? That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I, I, because most really, people, I... I'll tell you why, I, I'll qualify my question, uh, Shri Krishna. It's not a loaded question. I'm asking because in this age of social media, people will say, ah, there's a toolkit. Somebody has ordered all these guys to get together and boycott this event. That's the allegation okay. that will come against you. <laughs> all right. So, I, I mean, beautiful question, you know, and that's really what makes uh, this generation uh, very, very interesting, to be honest. Because, mm. uh, honestly, we've not picked up the phone and spoken to Ranjani Gayatri ji or Vishaka Hari ji or Dushyan Sridhar ji. They are all very, very good friends. We know them yeah. quite well. But this... This, believe me, is from the heart. It's from the bottom of the heart where, you know, people like us have gone through a lot of pain seeing mm. all this happening over the last seven years. And our mouths have been shut for whatever reasons. I'm not getting into that right now. Uh, mm. But when, to be honest, you know, thank you Music Academy for providing this opportunity in a plateau. Because this has allowed a lot of us to come out with that, you know, hidden act anguish with, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's been buried deep within. Uh, hmm. But it's, it, to be honest, it's just a let out. It's but just a you, let out. Have you, I, I, I imagine that, you know, given that you occupy, uh, you know, the world of Carnatic music, have you had the opportunity to talk this out with TM Krishna? What kind of a relationship do the both of you have with TM Krishna? You're both very well regarded, globally admired singers. Have you ever just had a conversation with him, chatted it out? I think I think the maximum that uh, conversation that we've personally had with TM Krishna is possibly when we meet once in a while for musicians cricket or possibly outside uh, the gymnasium that mm. we used to go to. So beyond that, that's there's never been a point of see. I think the whole um, why 
we want to uh, thank social media at this point of time so much is because there have been the last few years, like I said in the beginning, we don't come from a privileged background where we can pick up the phone and get mm. uh, a column to put our thoughts on the Hindu. Yeah. Now, why is today, today, why do we have a uh, republic in India today? And, uh, you know, the, the uh, people calling us and talking to us is because we put this out on social media and we brought it into discourse at this point of no, time. No, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. And uh, it's there is no it, doubt fact, that the social the, media world has carried your carried your word far and wide. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And in fact, in fact, one of the things that we've consciously done since this morning, in spite of having a social media team that handles it, is from this morning. In fact, from yesterday night, ever since we put out this post, we've actually been personally replying to everybody who's posted a comment or a message or a reply from either sides, where somebody has come in yeah. and say, "Are you then saying that?" Uh, caste system should exist in music. We tell them, you know, we don't see the caste system in music. The problem is you have heard only one side of the whole discourse. You've even not given us a chance to tell you what our perspective see, is. See, we we okay. come from Kerala. We come from Kerala where, yeah. you know, everybody considers Yeshu Das Ji as God. Okay? Nothing below God. Yeah. The great yeah. singer Yeshu Das Ji as God. And, you know, I, I, it's it's even difficult for me to classify him as belonging to a particular religion. But I have to say this to make my point. So, Eshudas Ji is a Christian, right? But but does does anybody ever bother about that? He is still he still draws maximum crowds in any concert he does. He performs Correct. in all yeah. the prestigious uh, locations where Carnatic music happens. His version of the lullaby for Lord Ayappa <clears throat> is played even today in Shabari Mala. So hmm. when this art form has actually united people. I don't understand Mr. And Mr. T. M. Krishna's problem because this is like what Vedanta says, you know, headache without a head. There is no headache. Why are you complaining about it? <laughs> okay. I mean, Final question to, then. To just, sorry, to just add on to this point, yes. uh, that is also the case with MS Subalakshmi Amma. How many houses do you know, not just in uh, Chennai, but how many houses do you know in most of South India and a significant part of North India that does not play at least one composition of yeah. MS Amma every day. I agree. And, I agree and, with that. You know, I, if I if I may just tell you this too, you know, Ram Kumar and I had the privilege of working with Ustad Gulam Mustafa Khan a few years ago. Okay. Now we walk, we, we walk into his house and the first thing he teaches us is a Saraswati Stuti he has composed. So mm, musicians truly, bottom of our hearts, we, we are extremely, extremely open and we honestly believe that, you know, music is an expression of the one higher power. And I, I, understand. And I think it is really important for musicians to now, you know, put their act together and make sure to not create further causes to divide the society, right? I mean, we should be using the music that we've been blessed with to bring the society together. I understand. Which brings me to my final question because uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's very important that, you know, uh, singers like you have have used your freedom of expression just like T.M. Krishna has and uh, T.M. Krishna believes that the many things he has said, uh, you know, need to be said because these are uncomfortable truths about the industry. But, uh, you know, what is great about what we're talking about right now is that this probably opens up a debate. The fact that Ranjani Gayatri, the both of you and so many others have, have spoken out and at the same time it carries that much more weight. So this is a, an amazing example of freedom of expression. You know, f from, from, from uh, you know, a class of folks like you, let's face it, who are so focused on your art, we barely ever hear any of you speaking about what's happening in the real world because your art is a difficult art. Most of your time is spent practicing and being at concerts. So you barely have time for anything else. So I salute you on that. I think it's a great thing to hear from some of you icons, uh, you know, on uncomfortable issues of this kind. But just my final small question, uh, either of you can take the answer, which is that, you know, uh, 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 staying away from something like the Music Academy Conference is obviously not an easy decision to make for artists like you. You know, it's a big well, event, very, very prestigious, very, very powerful, very influential. So have you thought about what next? I mean, can this be fixed? What do you think? Is there a formula so, of how to fix this? So, you know, uh, first of all, we, we, are, we are extremely fortunate to belong to a family uh, where we value our, uh, you know, the values, the human values that uh, we have is always given prominence and the cause is much bigger than the individuals. Mm. Uh, so we have the full support of the family, which really made it easy. Uh, 
and right. uh, I, it will be interesting to see how it pans out i mean i think i think at some points of time it is very important to be on the right side of history and it's an instinctive decision mm. um we just did what we felt was right and uh, most importantly we meet our students and a lot of our well wishers every day and uh, uh, if we didn't do this we were going to meet them tomorrow with that guilt yeah. and uh, our conscience pricking tomorrow which is not something that we want to live with i understand i understand what you're saying and i once again thank you for speaking so candidly it's uh, important and here through india today your voices have gone to millions of people and your admirers will be watching as well your fans uh, uh, you know for whom it is important to hear what people like you think they usually only hear you sing but they've hear, heard you speak about an issue which is obviously close to their hearts so this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out uh, let's remember that all of the people that we're talking about in this segment are fabulous indian artists everyone so even though uh, you know this entire debate may be framed as a someone versus someone let's remember uh, that this is art we are talking about there are some right. uncomfortable issues that are being discussed and let's hope that there can be uh, you know a, a, a sober discussion a sober debate and things can actually come together Absolutely. in the, peace thank you very much we would like to the, yes, the one point that yes. we'd like to however add um, is we would like to request we've been receiving a lot of um, support a lot of comments a lot of messages on this the one request that we have for either sides is this is a churn that is happening it is very yeah. important to be nice to each other because end of the day all of us want to walk out of this as better human beings so let's keep that in mind absolutely i i can't promise that on social media but i assure you that here on <laughs> india today we will we will always keep it friendly and sober thank you very much shri krishna thank you, and Pleasure. and thank uh, you so and, and rajkumar the Raj, uh, the Trichur brothers. Thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. <music> Delhi Minister Atishi is addressing the media live. This is on the back of the High Court not granting protection to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. ED, जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का आज एक राजनैतिक हथियार बना हुआ है, कि ये तो बताइए कि आपकी सैकड़ों रेड के बाद आज आप जो समन पे समन समन पे समन समन पे समन भेज रहे हैं ये तो आप बताइए कि आपको कितने पैसे मिले अभी तक कितना पैसा रिकवर हुआ अभी तक कितना प्रोसीड्स ऑफ क्राइम मिला जो छापे मारे आपने आम आदमी पार्टी के नेताओं पे के घर पर उनके ऑफिस में उनके लॉकर में उनके पैतृक गांव में क्या एक रुपए की भी पैसे की रिकवरी हुई है नहीं हुई है ईडी अपने प्रेस रिलीज में लिखने लायक तक पैसे रिकवर नहीं कर पाई है मैं तो यह भी कहूंगी कि जितना पैसा ईडी ने अपनी रेड्स में लगा दिया उसका खर्चा भी रिकवर नहीं कर पाई होगी ईडी आज तक दो साल की इन्वेस्टिगेशन में ना ईडी को ना सीबीआई को सैकड़ों अफसर लगाने के बाद हजारों रेड करने के बाद एक रुपया भी आम आदमी पार्टी के किसी नेता से किसी मंत्री से अभी तक नहीं मिला है और यही कारण है कि आम आदमी पार्टी के नेता बहादुरी से डटे हुए हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी और उनके राजनीतिक हथियार ईडी के सामने वरना जिन जिन पार्टियों के नेताओं ने भ्रष्टाचार किया है जैसे ही उन पर ईडी की रेड होती है जैसे ही उन पर ईडी का केस होता है जैसे ही उनको ईडी का समन आता है वो अगले दिन भारतीय जनता पार्टी का पटका पहन लेते हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी की टोपी पहन लेते हैं और भारतीय जनता पार्टी में शामिल हो जाते हैं फिर ईडी जाके कोर्ट में हाथ जोड़ के कहती है जी हम केस बंद कर रहे हैं हमारे कागज खो गए हमारी फाइलें खो गई हमारे पास कोई सबूत नहीं लेकिन आम आदमी पार्टी एक इकलौती पार्टी है जिसके नेताओं पर केस होने के बावजूद रेड होने के बावजूद समन आने के बावजूद और कई नेताओं के जेल जाने के बावजूद हम फिर भी भारतीय जनता पार्टी के खिलाफ इस लड़ाई में डटे हुए हैं ये कहते हैं अपने प्रेस रिलीज में कि सौ करोड़ का भ्रष्टाचार किया मैं तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी से पूछूंगी कि अगर हमने सौ करोड़ का भ्रष्टाचार किया होता तो आज अपने नेताओं को छुड़ाने के लिए आपको पचास करोड़ हमने इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स में दे दिया होता
So could Arvind Kejriwal's arrest be just around the corner is that big question.